Yeah, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of a flashback from our C-47 that we brought across the Atlantic uh, back in 2012. And uh, it came back and we flew it across, uh, left southern England. Uh, first stop was uh, Scotland after we did a little bit of test flying. Then we went to uh, Reykjavik, Iceland, went to Narsasawak, uh, Greenland, went to uh, Goose Bay, Canada, and eventually ended up, I think, in Montreal. And then we were trying to get to Oshkosh that year, but unfortunately, because of weather delays and a few things, we didn't get there until about five days after, four or five days after Oshkosh was over. But it was a great trip. Uh, we left it up at Oshkosh for about six or seven months. And uh, then uh, Frank Moss helped me fly the airplane down from uh, Oshkosh. And at some point, uh, once we got it down, we went on to do some other things. The airplane sat for about a year. And uh, then I needed to kind of, I still needed to get a check ride, even though I flew the airplane over in the left seat. I needed to get a check ride. So what I ended up doing was I got Frank Moss up there and uh, we did a little bit of flying. And that's what we're going to see today uh, before I did my check ride. So getting a little refresher here. So here we are in the Compass Rose restaurant when uh, Act Two was still open. Frank and I are going over, you know, some of the V speeds and uh, you know emergency procedures and things like that. Frank is uh, very well known in the DC-3 uh, old airplane uh, uh, field. Uh, he worked up in Alaska for a long time flying DC-4s and stuff. And uh, Frank's got his own DST Douglas sleeper transport that he's working on. You know, so here we are just basically going over, you know, the uh, pre-flight, different things, what to look for, you know, pressures and, uh, you know, accumulator pressures and, you know, make sure that the fire systems are all hooked up, you know, what's where, uh, just getting a really great refresher. And Frank, uh, Frank just knows these, these threes like the back of his hand, so uh, he'd be a great one. He does, does some training uh, also. Here we are pulling out the rudder locks and the, all the things. These All these things are painted red, and there's some carburetor, the little puffy things there. Uh, there's basically 10 things you have to remember, and so as long as you got 10 things, you know, you're good. Here we are in a cockpit basically just getting kind of set up, you know, going through the uh, you know pre-cockpit checks and stuff. Um, checking the controls here, making sure they're all full, free, and clear. Um, and you'll see us here going through, uh, you know, different aspects of the checklist. Frank is uh, reading off the checklist, and, uh, you know, I'm basically responding. Some of the things we've seen, uh, you know, we've done in the in the back, we've already done, you know. So uh, we got Wayne back there uh, who was, uh, came along on the trip as well. He was my AI, and uh, he's helped us do some things and confirming things that we've done, like make sure everything's, uh, you know, secure in the back and all the control locks are basically out and we've got the chocks, uh, you know, pulled and things like that. Uh, hydraulic uh, levels are up, oil levels are up, and, uh, you know, going over how much fuel we've got and things like that, so. Engine start checklist. Okay. Okay. Magneto switches. Yeah. Master's in. Manifold pressure. Uh, manifold pressure, 30 about inches. About 30 inches, okay. Props. Props full forward. Throttles. Throttles are set. Mixture. Bottle cut off. Carburetor heats cold and off. on my and side. Yeah. And lock. Okay. And it says start emergency brief, and we are, we know what to do if it catches fire. So. Yep. Keep it turning and uh, open the throttle. Open it. Cut the fuel off. Give it all the air you can. When it starts, keep it going. Okay. All right. So you primed it, and then we're ready. Whenever you want. So you want to do the left one first? Okay. Or? Here we go. So mag, contact, okay, here we're climbing. All right. All right. All right.
Yeah, so here we are taking off on one of Fantasy Flight's uh, grass runways. This is the long one. It's about 5,000 feet. See Interstate 4 there in the background. There we go. We're launching off. I'm going to do, uh, you know, some practice landings and stuff. Uh, this particular airplane, when it when you actually want to come into land, even with the flaps all the way down, uh, one of the things you always want to do is you want to have at least uh, as much uh, manifold pressure uh, as you do RPM. So if you have like 2100 RPM, you want to have 21 inches of manifold pressure because it keeps the, uh, the, the prop from like reverse loading. And, uh, you know, there's sometimes there can be some oil, you know, issues that you're not getting enough oil up on the nose there. And, uh, in the nose case and uh, anyway it's just kind of a practice that you use on pretty much all radial engines and uh, so actually when you can't bring the throttles all the way back the airplane actually floats pretty good when you come into land you know so here we are kind of coming in for a landing you can see we got a pretty good crosswind there um, from the left and uh, anyway, so you know, when, you know, once you get in kind of over the power lines over there, there's some balls out there, orange balls, so I can see uh, where they're at. You know, once you get over there, then you can wipe the throttles off once you're going pretty slow. Um, but uh, it's a pretty cool airplane. Most of the times they recommend to land at the two point, uh, but I have done some three point landings and on the grass it's pretty, uh, pretty benign. Um, such a great airplane. one there and right at the end there you know kick it out a little bit almost a three point there so anyway um, and we did a number of these and uh, you know just basically kind of getting getting used to the airplane again I hadn't flown the airplane in almost a year and uh, we've gone on to do some other things and uh, I want to do a little bit of training before uh, my check ride uh, which would have been with Vern Jobes, who was actually the one that flew across uh, with us uh, from England. So uh, it was a great trip. The landing gear sometimes, like kind of like on a P-40, you know, one gear will go up before the other one. Um, it's just basically the way the hydraulic fluid is, uh, you know, circulating in the system. But uh, the main thing is that they go all the way up, and mainly they go all the way down. Yeah, so here you can really see the cross one. left wing down there, touching down on the left wheel. flybys for you just to have some fun and uh, let you listen to the sound of the engines as it goes by. I'll keep quiet from here on out.
Yeah, so that was a, that was a good uh, kind of a pre uh, getting back used to the airplane. You know, my plan was to do a couple of more flights and uh, you know try and be as ready as I could uh, for the check ride with Vern. So that was this was a good flight. All right, let me get the rudder. The elevator. You want the same fuel? Tomorrow? Well, that was fun. <laughs> First time in about a year, Frank flew it down from Oshkosh with me. It's pretty cool. What a beautiful darling. Feeling a lot more comfortable. It's like flying a big elephant, but don't let Frank hear me say 